entrance, the entrance into the harvest season. We keep talking about it and emphasizing it on it so that you will be expectant. You know, I want you to know that if you're not expectant, when a blessing comes, you may miss it because you're not looking forward to it. Amen. So as we talk about it all the time, is to keep you in remembrance and be in full consciousness of it. When God has given you something, he does not compel you to take it. He says, I place before you life and death, choose life. I place before you failure, curses and blessings. Choose, uh, choose a, a, a blessing. He will tell you what to do, but he will not force you to do it. He will bless you and it's up to you to receive the blessings, to collect it. That's why we talk about it all the time. It's a season. Be conscious of it. Be expectant. Every day when you wake up, thank God it's a new day. For this is the day that you have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Your joy and, and gladness will flow from the things you experience on that day. You've already acknowledged that it's the day that the Lord has made. And you told yourself, I will rejoice and be glad in it, for that is what God wants for you. So if you're going to rejoice and be glad in it, as you step out from your home, or even if you walk at home, what is your expectation? Are you expecting a blessing that day? You may not know how it will come, where it will come from, by whom God is going to send it, but be expectant anyhow. For our God is good. He is always looking forward to blessing his children. For the prosperity of his children gives him uh, 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 joy. He takes pleasure in your prosperity, in your, in your success. That was why in the book of Isaiah, he said, come, let us reason together. If there's a problem that is keeping you from attaining greatness, from attaining destiny, from attaining the accomplishment of God's desire for you for that day, let's flesh it out. But most of the time we switch off, we do other things and we never are conscious. Even when the blessing is in our face, we don't recognize it because we are not expecting it. We just, as we, we're just thinking that it will just happen. Remember, you have a dual, dwelling existence in heaven and in earth. when God blesses you in heaven you are supposed to pick it up on earth that is why he says work out your salvation with fear and trembling you work it out here on earth because in heaven you are seated together with Christ at the right hand of God's throne you are already there where you are saved your blessings it's not just a spiritual blessing, but also physical material blessing. The spiritual blessing you have received, the material blessing will be made manifest to you on earth. So it is up to you to reach out in expectation and take hold of it so that it will bless you materially and physically here on earth. If you know how big our God is, then you will agree with the Bible that nothing shall be impossible for him to do. Providing for you is not a, a, a problem of God. He made the whole universe. Many of the time we are struggling and contending and fighting and pursuing the blessings that he has placed uh, 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 um, how do I put it now? In the public domain, the blessings that are available to both Christians and non-Christians and all creatures that he has made. But for the sons of God, his blessings go beyond that. The one in public domain, anyone can struggle for it. You can get rich materially by it. You can when it is taken from you, you can be poor and all those. That's why you have rich people and poor people. 
Everything God has made and provided for the earth is sufficient for the earth. By God's determination and distribution of plan, no one should be richer than the other. Because what you need is a sustenance that will keep you in health and in life. But because it's in public domain, it's free for all. People can be rich by fraud, by murder, by stealing. People can be rich by working hard, inventions, and all those kind of things. Those are riches in public domain. It's open to everybody. But for the special children of God, the Bible says that is riches for wealth hidden in darkness. Those are the ones he confers to his children. The kind of wealth that will accomplish your greatness and bring you into your destiny. Many of us don't even know. We read those, Bible, those words, we just go through because we don't seem to understand them. Apart from the one in public domain, that by which you live, you are provided for and all those things. There is a, a different dimension of wealth and blessings that God has hidden, has hidden in darkness. That he opens and lavishes upon those who have proven themselves, who are paying attention. And every Christian should know about this and pray because he's just sitting there. It will help you to your expected end. It will protect you. It will bless you and take you to your destiny. It will free your hands and give you the liberty to be able to help people to do the work of ministry, sponsor ministries, do all kinds of things. As long as you will not use it to the occasion of the flesh. In any case, I believe that when you are a child of God, you have passed that stage that you might use it to the occasion of the flesh. The people who use things to the occasion of the flesh are those who walk in the flesh. They are not led by the Holy Spirit. In other words, they are children of men and not sons of God. Praise the Lord, we thank God for this month. Open your eyes, open your ears, pay attention. Stay with the Holy Spirit who guides you on earth here to show to you the things that are meant for you. The Bible said, Jesus Christ said in the Bible that I will send you the Holy Spirit even the promise of the Father. He will teach you all things. He will take the things that I have taught you and show them to you. He will take the things that belong to me and reveal them to you. That is the way you get these riches and blessings and treasures that are hidden in darkness. The ultimate wealth. And the Lord guides us. As we pay attention, may he guide us into this revelation. May he lead us to that place where we can be so blessed. People will see our blessing, the amazement of faith. And uh, 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 they cannot attribute it to anything except that this is of God. This is of God. That is my prayer for you. And since we have waited and be waiting since the time of COVID lockdown, did we draw closer to him? Are we more uh, comfortable with the Holy Spirit?
think about these things. May the Lord bless you as you concentrate yourself with the Lord that you may enter into the blessings that he has already ordained to the heart of men what God has prepared already prepared for his own children that love him it is already sitting waiting for you to take hold of for you to possess, for upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It is already their possession, but they are yet to possess it or take hold of it. Beginning from this month, you will begin to enter into it and take hold of it. Don't think this is outlandish. Don't think this is a pep talk. No, this is a declaration of God's intent, desire, and plan for you. Let us endeavor to enter into his rest. For in that process, we shall enter into the place where our treasure is lying. Unveil it and possess it. For his kingdom. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time and season in our lives. We thank you because we are here to hear these words. They are your words declared in righteousness. We thank you for those that are joining us from whenever, wherever they are joining us from, on Facebook and later on YouTube. We thank you because you have counted us worthy to know. For you said in your word, it is appointed unto you to know. We receive these words with humility, with joy. We commit this day into your care. Take absolute control. Let everything that you have ordained for us for this week, for this day, this week, and this month come to pass. May we hear testimonies of joy and celebration of the wonderful things that you have visited us with. May we become those who will declare openly everywhere what the Lord has done, thereby showing forth his praise. May we become those people who will bring joy and pleasure to the heart of God. May we declare the power of the kingdom and the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ and the amazing presence of the Holy Spirit in power and verity in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the 4th of July celebration or commemoration as you have blessed us with citizenship, or resident alien in the United States, as it were today. You have brought us to a land of plenty. You have brought us to a land of blessing. You have brought us to a land of freedom. In your goodness, in your mercy, in your love. There are millions elsewhere who wish to come here, but they're not here. In your wisdom, you brought us here. Father, may we not disappoint you. May we accomplish the purpose for which you brought us here and made us part of this great nation. We joined the United States to celebrate 246 years of independence when, when the yoke of oppression was moved from off their shoulders. Thank you for this. Thank you for using the United States to evangelize a lot many countries and spreading the word. And today we pray as we celebrate this independence together with joy and thanksgiving that the sins of America will be forgiven, that the great works 
that they have done for the sake of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ will not be forgotten. That there shall be a new revival in the heart of Americans, that America will be truly revived and not glory in the past glory, but celebrate and commit to the present glory and the future glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your kingdom come. Let your counsel be established and stand. Let this country that was nicknamed God's own country not forget the God of their fathers, but continue to work stronger and become even a greater force for the kingdom of God than ever before. Father, we thank you for the United States. We thank you for this celebration. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the 4th of July week or weekend of 2022. Amen. We are celebrating together. And we thank, him, we thank God for every celebrant. Don't let it pass without joining the celebration. Many times we don't partake in these things. But we tell ourselves, oh, that is for the children of men in the world. No. We are supposed to be their leaders. If we don't celebrate it, they will celebrate it their own way and the devil will intervene, corrupt it, distort it, and make it ugly. But when Christians, the sons of God, participate, they set the standard. They show them how to do it right. And when it is done right long enough, it becomes the culture, the norm. Whenever we abdicate, we are letting the enemy set the standard. So whatever we do here, we do it in the Lord Jesus Christ in righteousness led by the Holy Spirit so that the proper standard will be laid. Amen. Many times in ignorance in the past, we say, oh, we are Christians, we don't participate in these things. You are in the world. You have a dual dwelling existence and you are dwelling here on the, in, in, in the world is the dwelling of power. You have been conferred with power to set the, uh, the, 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 the tone, to lead the way, to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. Remember what is written in, I think, I think it's in Revelation, that the kingdom of the earth uh, 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 has become the kingdom of God. Amen. And we are here to show for the praise of God, to show for the praise of our Lord Jesus Christ, to set the standard. But now we have so abdicated that we are complaining of the oppression of the enemy. The Bible said they will come with oppression and all those things, but when we resist them, they have no choice or power to stand. They will run. The Bible already said that the weapons that are fashioned against us will not prosper. The Bible said that they will surely gather, but the gathering will not be of God. In other words, anything that is not of God cannot stand. Why are we so afraid? Why are we so weak? In quietness will be our strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we go the way of the world and begin to make noise and run on the streets and do all those things by the way the world is, that's what they want you to do. That is where their strength is. But in quiet dignity, in the Holy Spirit, will be our strength. It will be on top only and not beneath the Bible already declared. It will be first and not last. But those things are far and in between now. We can't find them. That's why all creation is lamenting. 
The Bible says they are waiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Where are those leaders that, that God promised? Where are our deliverers, our liberators? The oppression is getting worse and worse, but we don't see a deliverer. They are crying and they are mourning, they are groaning in oppression, just like the children of Israel, Israel did in Egypt. Let us arise, the sons of God, for our manifestation God gave that we might destroy the works of the devil. It pains one to come. And every time you hear people preach, they are preaching about deliverance, they are preaching about uh, 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 prosperity. This, that. When the work that we are supposed to focus on is there, it's not even spoken of. The things we preach are the things that the Lord said are we add when you take hold of the kingdom of God. Brethren, let our attitude change. Let our focus change. Let us begin to become children of our Father. We are not clones. We are originals. The heart of our Father is with us. Be a participator, because whether you like it or not, if you're not a participator, the will of God will still be done. Don't make yourself a loser when God has made you a success. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We, mark, we magnify your holy name. Today, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Today is the independent celebration Sunday. Even though the actual day is tomorrow, the celebration begins this weekend. We just want to talk briefly about the ultimate independence. The ultimate independence. Hallelujah. Amen. We join every American all over the world to celebrate the 4th of July. In commemoration of the independence of the United States of America in 1776, 246 years ago. Previous to this, previous to 1776, the States of America, as we know them today, we are under some powerful external influences that controlled or determined what happened there and how they were run or governed before 1776. Yes, they've started coming together and uniting as a nation, but colonialist, colonial masters still have influence and power over different parts of the United States. Amen. Some of these colonial masters are, to mention a few, England, France, Spain, Russia, and so forth and so forth. They influenced and controlled different parts of this nation. USA was not as a united uh, 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 or as one country, the were united as one country as at that time. The states have emerged, but they still had influences. British controlled and influenced some more, some places, France, Spain, even Russia, because we know that places like Alaska were under at some point under Russian control. Look at Hawaii. Hawaii was under Japanese control and influence. You go to the South, Mississippi, you, Florida, and all kinds of places, Alabama, New Mexico, California, major places that are controlled and influenced by major countries in Europe. Amen. Hallelujah.
USA was not as united as one country with the freedom we know and have today. The fortune of the territory was determined by external interests until the different states and territories began to pull together as one united country. And in 1776, they agreed and they declared independence from all the external governments controlling the different states or territories. Amen. Until that declaration of 1776 of independence. Amen. Until that declaration, the United States was not a powerful nation and could not be because they were not in control of their own fortunes. The, gen the greatness of the USA began after independence, when all the territories came to agreement to form one powerful United Nation. Through throwing off the yoke of colonial masters from off their shoulders. The United States was still as vast as it is today, from coast to coast. The whole continent as one country. But under this unity, control, influence, and rule, of different nations, therefore they have no one purpose. They could not attend their destiny. They couldn't do what they should do as one nation. But at 1776, they pulled together and became one nation. No external force or government or control or power was determining the direction of the United States from 1776. They came out from under oppression, division, disunity to determine their own future and fortune. They had the liberty. They brought themselves and educated themselves from someone else telling them what to do how to do it. And of course, when someone tells you what to do or how to do it or when to do it, they are not thinking of you. They are thinking of themselves and the benefits they're going to get. They are thinking of how to take the things that belong to you. They plunder you for their own benefit. People from Africa know this very well. And until today, they are still suffering from that plunder. But they have not overcome truly, fully from it. The United States established this 400 and 246 years ago. By 1776, after that declaration, began the truth self-identification, recognition of power they have, and exercise, freedom to exercise that power that brought the emergence of the greatest country in the whole world. Because lesser countries are no longer dividing and ruling them, depleting their ability to accomplish their destiny, to accomplish and attain power. The United States became the most powerful nation in the world. What they could not do under colonial masters. Amen. You can see this same process 
in individual human lives. What America went through is an example of what, what America went through as a nation is an example of what humans individually are going through. And I, you know, I told you before that you are a universe by yourself. We don't recognize these things. What the nation of the United States went through is what you are going through today. Under oppression, controlled by other forces, you cannot be you. You can only be you when you are delivered from such oppressions. When you are saved from such oppressions. When you are freed from such oppressions. Yes, you can see this same process unfolding in individual human lives. All humans are under the bondage of sin at birth. The Bible says in Romans 2.24, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Romans 5.12, the Bible says, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, not one man, only now, started by one, but passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. All have sinned. Every one born into the world after the fall of Adam and Eve was born into sin, with the exception of one, that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalms 51 5 says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Every person that comes into this world from the time Adam fell comes into this world under bondage to sin, under oppression, under the control and manipulation of the power of the devil. Everyone, without exception, Save Jesus Christ. Amen. That means mankind came under sin and the rule, power, oppression of the devil. The independence God gave to Adam at creation was lost when he, Adam, sinned, thereby dragging mankind under bondage to, to Satan. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, he that committed sin is of the, the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose, the son of God, Jesus Christ was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. The Bible says that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world to destroy the works, the power, oppression, bondage, affliction, and the limitations the devil placed on mankind. That's what Jesus Christ came to do, to destroy them, to free you, to remove their yoke from off your shoulder. Amen? God said to Adam and Eve in Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the, of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living Thing that moveth upon the earth. That's what God's commission. God sent man for leadership over the earth that he created. But the devil's goal, God's goal is for you to replenish, to be fruitful, to increase, to multiply, to have rule over the earth on behalf of God. For he placed all things that he has created under your feet and under your control. 
But the devil has a different purpose, a different goal. And the devil's goal is to steal what belongs to man that is holding in custody and in trust for God. The devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He came as a taskmaster to oppress, but God wants to set you free from this oppression of the devil. God wants to give you independence from the devil. For this, for this desire of our Lord, this is the desire of our Lord. It's written in Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that we are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God has a goal. Initially, he gave independence. Adam fell and forfeited the independence to the enemy, who became a colonial master, who became an oppressor, an oppressor, who became a vagabond, one who exploits the benefits and the goodness and the blessings of God that he has placed upon man. The devil has no farm of his own. He has no art of his own. He has no business or factory of his own. He does not make or manufacture anything except death. And even the death, he does not make it. He kicks one into dying. Amen? And when God saw that the devil has stolen this, he sent his only begotten son. He anointed him when he got here. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, freeing everyone that was oppressed under the power and control of the colonial master, the oppressor, the wicked Satan, the wicked dragon. It is God's desire that you be free. That was why he sent his son. Just as the United States had to come together and free themselves from the yoke of the little countries that divided them. And when they came together, they realized how huge they are, how powerful they are. And they were now masters above their oppressors. They were stronger than the oppressors, even when the oppressors came together. The same thing with you. God has sent his only begotten son to come. First of all, the greatest fear of man is death. And the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. So he took care of death, the first thing. The biggest fear of man is death. And when you receive Jesus Christ, that fear of death is taken away from you because you can no longer die. You live forever. You live in eternity. God is, has used this United States as an example for us. He wants you healed. That is his desire. He wants you delivered from oppression. He wants you delivered from affliction. He wants you to exercise freedom and rejoice in the Lord who made you. He wants you free to experience the freedom of God. For the Bible says where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Do you feel free? Do you feel powerful? United States attained power and greatness only after independence. You cannot attain your great calling or destiny under the control and oppression of another. When someone else is powerful enough and control and influence you, is influence you to do his bidding, to do his benefits, not yours. In other words, you cannot attain your calling. You cannot reach the height God has prepared for you. You cannot attain the greatness 
that he has built in you so that you can be first only and not last, above only and not beneath. As long as someone is making those determinations of where you go, what you do, where, what you can, uh, uh, whether you are free or not, you can never attain what God has prepared for you. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ declared in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not cometh not but for the for to steal. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. Not just abundantly, but more abundantly. In other words, I come to set you free, to begin to recognize what God has planned for you. Because say, no eye has seen it, no ears have heard it. It has not even come to your imagination how great that is. What God has prepared for you that is out there is an expression of your greatness that has not been made manifest. And it can never be made manifest if you are under the control of another spiritually. If the devil is reigning over you, he will never make you come to a place where you can throw him off and resist him. He will put you and keep you in perpetual bondage and oppression. On a daily basis, you are gnashing your teeth, looking for how to survive. Those who have acquired material wealth, he will lead you and control you into obnoxious display and fleshly living in that flesh that you are dead spiritually. That is the control of the enemy. The colonial master that comes to colonize, abuse, plunder, and destroy, steal, and kill. By the example of the United States, we saw that a time came, they said enough is enough. Let us pull together and stand together as God has called us to. Have you come to that place where you can say enough is enough? I am tired of this oppressive living under the control, power, and influence of the enemy, the devil. I want to come to that place where I can resist him and he will flee from me. Because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. You cannot do it by yourself, single rally. But when you team up with Jesus Christ by receiving him into your heart, he comes in the person of the Holy Spirit and dwells in you. Then you can declare that he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. And the devil is the one that is in the world. You can then renounce him and his ways and accept Jesus Christ as your savior, who will save you from the oppression? Who will save you from the, uh, uh, from the uh, degrading of the devil? Who will save you from the stealing of that which is meant for you from the devil? Who will save you from the devil stealing from you, killing you or destroying your resources? Only Jesus can do that. And as we celebrate with the United States, 246 years of freedom, not necessarily spiritual freedom. The United States is a nation. We're talking about freedom from oppression where your resources are plundered just like it has been done in Africa and is still going on today. This evil captors, this evil oppressors, this evil of the wicked ones, the strong one, man, 
The Lord asked them the Bible and said, can the prayer of such a strong man be delivered? Can the lawful captive prayer of such a strong man be delivered? God said, yes, emphatically, yes, it can be delivered. United States realized this and they delivered themselves from England, from France, from Spain, from Russia, from Japan, everything. And today they are the greatest nation, uh, nation in the world, the most powerful nation in the world. What they could not do under the operation. You're asking yourself, you are limited today. The Lord is saying to you in Isaiah 1, chapter 1, say, come to me. Let us reason together. I can see that you're not attaining that which is prepared for you. You're not taking position of it. You're not heading towards the direction of your destiny, your expected end. Come. What's your problem here? Let's reason together. Let's think about it. Let's discuss it. If you sin, I will forgive and clear it away. I will wash you clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. You will be as white as snow. No taint, no spot, no wrinkle. Come, let us reason together. Reason with me. Let's discuss it. You need to be free to attain your destiny. You need to be free to live life and live it in full. More abundantly, the Lord said. That's why I came to set you free. Do not say no. For we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We have all reduced ourselves to a caricature of what we are supposed to. That is why the enemy, who is a very caricature, is ruling over us. We want to be free today. So you can say, on the day the United States was commemorating the 246th year of their independence, that day I became independent too. The Lord is calling you. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ has come to liberate you. Will you receive that liberation? Do you want to be liberated so that you can come of your own? You can be the ultimate creation of God that God has made. There, there are no two of you anywhere. You have no duplicates. Are you ready to stand up and stand strong and throw off the yoke of the enemy from off your shoulder so you can come out and become who God has called you to be? Are you born again? Are you sure you are truly born again? Have you received Jesus Christ? Because if Christ is in you and you are in him, you are a new creature. You are now different from that which the enemy overcame and controlled. He will no longer be able to recognize you or keep you under oppression because you have become something superior to him. Are you ready to walk in liberty to express yourself and give expression to the image of God that is in you and accomplish the expected end, the purpose of your creation and being sent into this world. Are you ready for that? The Lord Jesus Christ is waiting. He said, come to you, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He wants you to come into his rest. He said your body will be made light. Your yoke will be made simple, easy. That way you are free to act. That way you are free to implement what the Holy Spirit is telling you because you can hear him clearly. That way you have power to manifest what God has spoken concerning you spiritually. Independence Day is for you to be independent of the oppression of the enemy, the devil. And to today, I believe many who, we are, who will hear his voice, we run to him 
cry to him, our liberator, set us free, set me free. For how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about healing everyone that was oppressed of the enemy because God was with him. Are you one of those that you will come today to and bring healing, deliverance from oppression of the enemy? The enemy has been stealing from you. The blessing that God has released for you. Because he has control and influence over you, he determines what you will get and how to use it. He has no factory. He has no farmland. But he, was, he is very rich. Because he says he's a thief. He kills the owners and steal from them and destroy their legacy. Not today you can be free. Wherever you are, whatever your situation is, it doesn't matter what you have or you don't have right now, or what you see or what is at your own disposal right now. You have one thing. You have a heart, you have a voice, you have a, song, a, a tongue. You can call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to intervene in your life today. To begin your own independence. To begin the attainment of greatness, just like United States demonstrated. Only after independence did their greatness begin to make manifest. Begin, they begin to enjoy freedom to do as the Lord leads them. In the Old Testament, he says, go and do as the occasion warrants you. What are you doing today? Are you ready to receive that independence and deliverance as we celebrate United States independence? As we celebrate the 4th of July today, can we also declare our independence from the devil by inviting Jesus Christ into our lives? And for those who have already done that, thank him and bring to mind the truth and the importance of your independence. If you are only independent of the enemy, sin should not be your way of life. Because the devil has power over sinners. Sin is the doorway by which the devil can creep in and control. Because a sinner is an enemy of God, but God is merciful and gracious that he will give a chance to the enemy for their repentance, confession and forsaking of sin that they may be forgiven. What will you do? Have you received Jesus into your life and become independent from the enemy? It's up to you. If you want to attain greatness, if you want to attain your destiny, if you want to fulfill your calling, if you want to get to your expected end, this is a day of liberation. This is a day of celebration. This is a day to cast off from off your shoulder the burdens of Egypt, the oppression of the enemy. Let us pray. I want you to talk to God right now. Where do you stand? Have you entered into that place of liberty? Are you enjoying independence today? Today, many of us, of course, like tomorrow, many of us will go, we gather together, we celebrate, we eat, and we drink, and we share the sweet goodness of the Lord of this land. But while you are doing that in the flesh, have you attained spiritual independence?
which is most important than even the physical independence. Have you gotten to that place where you are truly independent? That you may attain that for which God has called you. You cannot make God a liar after he calls you and then you fall short of his glory. And then you turn around to blame him. Today you have an opportunity to take hold of that kingdom power of your liberty through Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit will guide you. You know where you stand. I cannot tell, but the Lord can tell. The Holy Spirit to you can tell. I want you to now talk to the Lord. Are you desirous of your independence? Talk to him right now. Do you want your independent total liberation from oppression? Cry unto the Lord Jesus Christ and have, ask the Holy Spirit to direct the word of God in your heart so that you can speak it out from your tongues. The Lord is with you. As usual, while we are doing that, part of the process is agreement. Whatever you shall touch in prayer that you agree together to ask the Father, he will give it to you. Our communion table, as we break the bread, we agree together as the body of Christ, which the bread represents. So as we break the bread and eat it with thanksgiving, we agree together as one in the Lord Jesus Christ. To take up your bread and break it with thanksgiving and eat it in agreement as we are praying for you. Total deliverance, total liberation from oppression, total deliverance from poverty, from sickness, from confusion, from hell. We do it in the body of Christ together in agreement. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pick up your bread, please. We break it with thanksgiving or accept it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Well, then you can take up your call at this time. For well, this is the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ. The new covenant that makes all this new to you. The new covenant that will pursue and overcome and supersede the old one in the flesh. This is done in the spirit. They say, as often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Take it to the Lord. As you do this in the power of He who is in you, who is above oppression, who has set you above and beyond the power of the enemy. He says, I give you power to walk or to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And all the power of the enemy, and He will by no means be able to hurt you. That's the life of Christ that is portrayed by the wine will represent his blood that we take. Thank God for this day. Thank God for reminding you that you are delivered and you have independence from the enemy. Thereby live as someone who has independence from the enemy in power, in verity. That you are the son of God Sin shall not manifest in your life, but righteousness and the destruction of the works of the enemy shall be your portion. As you go, 
to be commemorating this 246 years of independence of the United States, learn from the United States and maintain your spiritual power in the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Happy, happy 4th of July. God bless you. Amen. Shako Prima Rida de la Santa Christian. Hallelujah. As you go tomorrow, enjoy yourself with the Lord. Enjoy it with wisdom. Enjoy with understanding. Enjoy spiritually. Enjoy it physically. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. Happy 4th of July. Amen. Eat, drink, and rejoice in the Lord. Your freedom from oppression. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father.